Hi folks, how's everybody doing? Uh, I hope you all had a good holiday weekend or a just a good weekend overall. Um, I just got back from work. It's a little late here. It's already almost eight o'clock. I didn't get home till seven o'clock. Um, but anyway, I want to show you what I carry today. And it's a pretty cool knife that I just got yesterday in the mail. And for some updates, I'm still waiting on some things. I'm still waiting on my Smoky Mountain Knife Works order. And um, also, I have my Grail knife that I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Although I, do, I, I want to badly. Uh, that's still um, being held up in San Francisco right now. So actually, I got like three different orders stuck in California many many miles away from me but anyway they'll get here sooner or later i guess uh, let's take a quick spin around the block you'll see a little hint of sheffield knives down here towards the bottom you got your arthur wright barlow and then four lee white taylor eyewitnesses all in a beautiful row um you have a Boker King Cutter that I still need to do a video on. And over here, got the Shat Morgan uh, Horticulture Knife and a German Office Knife, which is pretty cool. I'll be doing a video on that. But also got some GECs up there, and that's... That's kind of related to one of the packages that I got being held up in San Francisco right now. And, of course, the two Queen products, the um, Winchester Clasp and the Shanton Morgan Clasp. And over here, we got the Victorinox Solos, a green Alox and a blue Alox, and a Victorinox Warthog Tinker, along with a Carl Schlieper... Um, Jim Bowie micro knife that's what that was called and of course the Camillus official Cub Scout knife that I have to do a video on but this one's kind of cutting in front because I carried it today and it's an awesome knife it's a Sheffield knife um, it's not real famous it might be famous to the guys across the pond there but to tell you the truth, uh, I just heard about it, heard about them when I seen this knife on eBay. And I'm not going to slide it out because it's a black ebony handle and it probably won't show up real good. So it's a triple fluted bolster, four and a half inch handle. It's a Christopher Johnson company. Now, they were around for a long, long time, and George Wooston Home Company, the Wooston Home Company, bought them out in 1955. So, this could be anywhere from 1955 to the um, early 20th century, probably. Anywhere probably from 1920, maybe. I mean, because it holds the old style, and by that I mean... Here's an 1800s um, double fluted bolster Taylor Eyewitness. And this one's in Buffalo Horn and this is in Ebony. But you can see this is 18, 1880 to 1900s. And this, I don't know what the date is on it. But I'll compare the two a little closer in a minute. I want to show you how strong the pole is on this. It has a long pole. Oh. And listen to this. Absolutely zero wobble. Nice thick spine. Thin at the top for piercing. And this is in great condition. There's almost like 100% of the steel left on this baby. Let me show you the maker mark. Now there was three companies out of Sheffield that used a flag. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Let me see. I had a, here's my little pointer here. 
Um, right here it says CJ. This is actually a flag, and the post of the flag goes all the way down to here, and this would be the bottom of the post. So actually, this would be an upright flag in this direction. But the other two were Walker Hall and CK. So you got CK, CJ, and Walker Hall that used a flag on their um, maker mark. But here you'll see it's a little worn off. Top line, it says C. Johnson, Sheffield, England. There's the CJ, the flag. Everything turned yellow. But this is just a cool knife. I carried it right in my back pocket, no sheath. Um, sh sharpened it up a little bit at work. It's pretty sharp. Got the half stop. Listen to this clamp down. Bam! So keep your fingers away if you ever pick one of these up. What I do like about it is, I don't know if you guys remember me telling you, but I do like a flat knife like this. For one, you can just set it down and it's going to stay where you set it down. And for the other, it's easy to index without looking at it. So, you know, if you want to flip it to make it cut this way, um, you pretty much know where the edge of the blade is at all times. Um, especially because it's nice and smooth here. If you have it here for for a, a rip cut, pole cut. But I know... Um, for the Sheffield knives, the lamb foot and sheep foot uh, blade are kind of the bell of the ball. But um, if you look into the history of Sheffield knives, um, majority of them are spear point. In fact, on that movie that I made, about halfway through it, um, you'll see a display case with a bunch of old Barlow's, uh, my friend Matt Sanders. Those are his personal collection. And most of those are, well, actually about half of them are Sheffield Barlow's made in England or made in Sheffield, England. And they all have spear points. So although the lamb foot and the sheep foot are more probably more stylish, I think the spear point is more of a all-around useful blade because you can pierce straight ahead with it and you got a little belly here to to roll your cuts with and just a beautiful handle beautiful ebony handle you'll see there's a little bit of gap in in here but i mean it's a solid knife absolutely no wobble whoops and what it compares to is I don't know if you guys remember this. This is an old uh, late 19th century Taylor's Eyewitness, which also has a really strong pole and a spear point. And here you'll see Taylor Sheffield, real eyewitness, real eyewitness knife. With this is stamped right into the blade. It's a little bit shorter. Um, as you'll see, probably about a half inch. I guess this would be a four inch handle versus the four and a half inch handle. But you got your double fluted bolster here and your triple fluted bolster there. Let's put it down just to take a better look at it down here. And I'll throw up a Lee White lamb's foot just to show you a little bit more uh, how gargantuan this thing is. Let's see if we can turn the light on. I don't know what's going on with uh, 
that Taylor Eyewitness, is that because all the humidity? Let me see if I can wipe that off. Yeah, I think there's a lot of humidity that's changing the color of this handle. It's like it's been like 90, over 90 degrees and real humid here in Michigan for the past week, probably eight days in a row. So as you can see, that ram's horn sucked up some moisture. So what I'm going to do after this video, put it in a plastic bag with a bunch of desiccant packs and see if I can draw some of that out. But there you go, another fine Sheffield knife. Um, a great user, a uh, back pocket carry uh, with a strong, strong pull. So until next video, my friends, take care. Peace.